And the past couple of years, Tom Brady has been absolutely spectacular. And it's especially surprising when he's playing that good at that age. He'll be turning 40 this August. And I think you would have to consider him to be the greatest ageless wonder to ever play in the NFL. Now, most people are considering him to be the unanimous GOAT of the NFL. And people would even go as far to say that he is better than Michael Jordan. That's a quote from Skip Bayless right there. Or a paraphrase quote from Skip Bayless. And when I look at this, yes, he is a fantastic quarterback. But to play that good at that age... Can we speculate that he at least is on some sort of performance enhancers? I think it's quite possible that he's on PEDs. And when I look at this, his diet just doesn't seem to add up at times. And it also seems a little bit sketchy that his doctor, Alex Guerrero, has practices in Eastern medicine, which is not your typical medicine and seems to have a lot of different and very skewed medical practices. Now, when I look at this, uh, the New York Post reported that Tom Brady's diet is complete BS that it just wouldn't work out. And they say that his diet is 80% alkaline and only 20% acidic. But some scientists like to argue that just because it's that he has 80% of his diet to be alkaline, that still does not completely get rid of his, the acidicness from it. Because no matter what gets to your stomach, it turns to acid to somehow, just because that's how the stomach digestion works. And they say that Tom Brady does it simply because he just does, he wants to keep his uh, muscles in check, just keep his reflexes still up and down. Now, when I look at this, I think diet can play a huge role on an NFL um, quarterback or an NFL player in what's known because you need to stay into a certain state. Now, certain players tend to age a little bit more in their age because they don't keep up with their diet. But it definitely seems strange that Tom Brady's still playing this highly at the level because it doesn't look as if he's playing at a normal 40-year-old's pace. Because he's not. He's not playing as if he's a 40-year-old. He's almost playing as, as if he's a 22-year-old with the knowledge of a 40-year-old when it comes to the NFL. And I can see why the guy can speculate with that and how it doesn't completely add up. Now, they also said in the article that the diet wouldn't work for everyone, but that doesn't mean it would, won't work for him. So I do think diet would be a reason there, but I also don't think it is the deciding factor to make Tom Brady a great quarterback. If you want to look at the article, I'll share the link in the description. Also, let's go on to Alex Guerrero. Alex Guerrero uh, got his uh, medical degree from, um, from the east um, side of the world. So Eastern civilization. So think of uh, Chinese medicine, for instance. That's where he kind of gets his uh, medical training from. So he doesn't really have a real degree in medicine. So that's very sketchy. Also, one thing for sure about Alex Guerrero is he said some sort of BS that he has to cure for cancer. I would say that is probably complete BS. Now, there are some People, like in the past, have said they had the cure for cancer. They said that Nazi Germany actually might have found the cure for cancer, which I don't really believe with because the story goes that a Jewish doctor proposed to Hitler that he has the cure for cancer and that Hitler kind of let him live and practice on his um, studies and whatnot. But it was deleted due to the war and whatnot, how Hitler didn't want the Americans to find out about it or the Western um, powers that were against Hitler to find out about it. But I also think that's a complete BS story because in the early 20th century, there's plenty of people throwing out BS treatments and whatnot. And it really sees this as a scheme as a Jewish man and uh, during the Nazi Germany, just trying to survive and not trying to get persecuted or get gassed or whatnot. Not saying he's a bad guy, but at the same time, though, I don't say exactly we have the cure for cancer. Also, one thing for sure about Alex Guerrero, he's very sketchy, and some of his practices don't seem completely out of whack. Now, hear me out on this. He says that water does a good job to cure concussions. Now, I wouldn't say he would go as far to cure concussions, because he's definitely a pitch man who definitely exaggerates a lot. But I definitely think water, or drinking water, is good for concussions, because if you have headaches, you, I think water is one of the best treatments for headaches out there. And when I look at a lot of NFL players out there, if they're going after a game, if they're going out clubbing, there's usually alcohol there. And drinking alcohol and getting a hangover, not saying they always get a hangover, but getting that head-pounding feeling from drinking that much alcohol the next day when you already was 
for pounding your head the other day playing an entire game of football can have some devastating effects on your brain. And I definitely do consider that having that can definitely be um, be bad. Because at clubs, you're not drinking water, you're drinking alcohol. And I think if you drink a lot more water and try to keep it healthy, that, that can be good. Now, when it comes to alcohol, uh, Tom Brady says he only drinks uh, a little bit of alcohol. So that would make kind of sense that concussions um, wouldn't affect them. So when it comes to alcohol intake, I don't think it would. Well, I think alcohol intake, if you take in a lot of it after playing a game of football, it can be extremely devastating. I think plenty of football players do that. And I think that can help accelerate uh, the death of some of these football players or some of the brain injuries that happen to these football players, which is bad. And since Tom Brady drinks a lot of water, I think that can definitely help them a lot. So when I look at Alex Guerrero, very sketchy doctor. I wouldn't really trust him, but apparently he has some really famous clients. He has Tom Brady, has Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman, and Tom Brady's wife, Giselle. And there are articles where people say he does work. And so just to understand Alex Guerrero's uh, kind of his culture when it comes to his uh, medical practices is doctors don't exactly uh, pick the treatment to make you a better athlete. They pick, make you They find the treatment that will make you feel better. So in the sense that rest is definitely helpful. Now, when I look at rest, rest is usually very helpful at times. But I also look at um, doctors when they say that you have to, when you look at Alex Guerrero, he says you have to fight through injuries and whatnot. And I do kind of uh, believe that because when it comes to your body, sometimes you have to fight through stuff. I think sometimes with the common cold, it's better to fight through it than to take medicine. If it's just a kind of small time cold, then you just kind of fight through it. If it's something really bad, then you take um, some sort of medicine for it and whatnot, because that's how I kind of go through it. And I find that that to work, too. So I don't think Alex Guerrero is completely out of whack when it comes to the idea of fighting your um, way out of sickness instead of retreating your way. But at the same time, though, it's not a typical practice. I think I would rather trust a normal doctor, a regular doctor that actually has a medical degree. And when I look at that... I think sometimes when it comes to certain injuries, rest is heck of a lot better than uh, fighting through it at times. Now, one thing for sure about Tom Bray is Tom Bray, when it comes to his career, he hasn't been very sacked that much. Now, when it comes to his offensive line, his offensive line has either been good or bad in his career. In 2016, I thought they had a good offensive line. I thought Nate Shoulder and Marcus Cannon definitely performed a lot better. But then in 2015, when they lost Nate Shoulder, and then uh, Marcus Cannon was actually garbage then. Uh, Tom Brady got hit 20 times and he was sacked four times in the uh, AFC Conference in 2015. So Tom Brady has had his fair shares of good offensive line play and bad offensive line play. But one thing for sure that he keeps it away is there's two things that he does with his play that prevents him from getting sacked. One is his quick release. And when you look at his offense, it's a lot of quick passes, a lot of short passes. More importantly, quick passes than short. And when I look at that, having that quick release kind of makes them not going to get hit as much. If you're going to hold on to the ball, heck yeah, you're going to get hit more. Look at Brett Favre. Brett Favre hold on to the ball longer. He got hit a lot more. And obviously, if you don't move, you get hit a lot more. Same thing with Kurt Warner. But I also look at it and see that when Tom Brady gets sacked, he doesn't fight through it. When I look at Ben Roethlisberger, Ben Roethlisberger comfortably uh, retirement just a handful of months ago. And he's a big bruising guy. He likes to fight his way through it. When Tom Brady gets hit or gets grabbed one time, Tom Brady just falls to the ground. He just gives up completely. And that might be a way for him to actually stay in the game longer and just keep his long term. And Tom Brady hasn't been sacked that much in his career. He has. I don't know the exact number on top of my head, but it's been pretty good. In the Super Bowl, he was sacked five times, but sometimes those were covered sacks and whatnot. And when I look at this, Tom Brady just doesn't get sacked um, a lot because of his release. And partially, when he does get sacked, he doesn't really uh, feel the hit as a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, who's constantly fighting his way through tacklers. So when I look at this, uh, it's definitely um, not wrong to speculate Tom Brady has taken any PEDs, but there's really not enough evidence to accuse Tom Brady for using PEDs and whatnot. And sometimes the Patriots, they've been caught doing some sketchy things. I think Spygate was more sketchy than the Flategate because... There's more teams that deflate footballs out there than the Patriots, but Spygate seemed it was more of a Patriots thing and something they do. So I wouldn't be surprised if they get caught with it. And also, 
the NFL would rather penalize a team that was that is very successful than a team that was very brown. If you look at the Cleveland Browns, if the Cleveland Browns were caught with the flake gate, they wouldn't be penalized. But if it but since it's the Patriots, they have good, you can at least affect them and take away a first round pick, which makes a lot more sense. And so I think down the road, maybe Tom Brady might be accused of taking PEDs, but at the same time, I also believe why he's playing so well at such a high level at his age, simply because he takes so good care of his body. So in the comment section, what do you think? Also, if you want to know uh, some links in the description of some of these articles, I'll show you and whatnot, and have a nice day.